Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Ganzo G716. In my personal opinion, I think Ganzo makes the highest value knives out there right now at the time of video taping this video. I love my what is it? <laughs> My Gadzo G704G. Uh, the last G in that 704 is that this is the one with the green scales. I really, really love this. This is my um, EDC uh, cheapy. You know, if I'm going to carry a cheap knife, uh, this is the one I always go to. But it's not cheap as in made cheap. It was just inexpensive, a little over $16. And it is, again, my favorite high value EDC knife. So when I saw this one on Fast Tech, which is the 716, I'm like, you know, I think that's another one that I could really, really like. Very uh, high value, feels solid, has that axis lock just like the uh, Benchmade. Here is a Benchmade Griptilian. You can see how that axis lock looks the same <laughs> really the same suspiciously the same but you know Gansel's not the only one to use the access lock uh, Cold Steel uh, ran quite a few knives with that same access lock so anyway let's uh, let's take a close look this really is a, a beautiful knife in, in my opinion you know beauty is subjective but uh, again, high value, very solid. I purchased this from Fast Tech. It was $19.25. They also have a serrated version. Let me take a look here on the Fast Tech website. The serrated version is $19.16. And for your convenience, I'll go ahead and put the links below. And that is the, my affiliate links to Fast Tech. They, uh, let me see, my orders from Fast Tech lately have been coming in in about three weeks. It takes about a week for them to get it shipped and then about two weeks to get here to the East Coast where I currently reside. Now the details for this knife is that the blade is a drop point blade. It's uh, 3.34 inches long. Thickness is 3.5 millimeters. It's made of 440C steel. That's uh, about 58 HRC on the Rockwell scale. Open length that, you're, that you see right here went open. <laughs> it's eight and a quarter inches long when closed. It is four and three quarter inches or uh, 120 millimeters. The weight, it, it's a hefty knife as with uh, my other favorite Ganzel knife, the 704. Um, Weight 5.11 ounces or 145 grams, and let's just start talking about the the aesthetics here of the knife. Scales G10 black, extremely aggressive, maybe the most aggressive um, scales I've ever had on any knife that I have ever touched or owned. It's uh, th this will not slip out of your hand if you're worried about. Um, let's say when you're skinning or doing something where your hands are wet and slippery this this is the knife with the most traction <laughs> this is it I've never felt one with any more than this and that's a both a pro and a con and we'll get to that here shortly um, you can see it has stainless steel liners in there and it does have a partial back spacer you have a glass breaker here that holds the reversible clip that could go from left to right handed carry it comes right handed carry tip up you can change it to left handed tip up but the glass breaker has this really strange um, hole just a little divot on each side so I think there's some sort of special tool that you use to unscrew that but um, most people will probably just take a pair of pliers and and sort of get it turned out, you know, screwed out and turned around. Um, again, access lock, just like the Benchmades, just like some of the Cold Steels, and maybe some other knives out there. I think I've also used it. The uh, clip is pretty nice. Um, I'd say it's between medium and tight, and it is pressing against the most aggressive 
um, G10 scales ever made or ever manageable. So it is difficult to get out of your pocket. Um, it does loop over, as you can see there, so it is deep conceal in your pocket. Uh, torque screw construction, you have a lanyard hole right there. Pivot screws again with a, uh, looks like a uh, torque screw right there. So it could be adjusted. Let's go ahead and open it. Opening it um, is by the, um, what do they call this thing, the thumb plate. There we go. And you can see this knife is completely ambidextrous, which I really like too, because of the access lock. The thumb plate and the reversible clip here, completely 100% and be dexterous. So you can see out of the box it's uh, probably requiring a little oil so you really have to flick that out there really good until you get a little bit of oil in there. Again drop point you have a false wedge here we already talked about the steel 440C. It's a uh, thumb plate it can be unscrewed looks like there's a little Torx in there also. Um, be careful with these. You know, you're talking about a relatively thin blade with an even smaller screw holding on that thumb plate. This is the case with all, you know, blades with thumb plates. You have uh, stainless steel liners in there. And uh, I think that's really it. So let's go ahead and go down the... Oh, the only other thing I failed to mention there is um, there is a sharpening trailer right there. So you don't have to worry about bumping the the edge there against your stone which is nice and there is a little bit of flat area if you have a clamp on sharpening device so let's go ahead and start doing the test the first thing I like to do is just sort of check ergonomics uh, regular grip there all the grips there feel uh, good there's no hot spots or anything jabbing me in the finger reverse grip really nice your finger does go across that glass breaker but because they sort of eased your thumb over there with this little cut out here it's not terrible you just don't wanna don't come down and smash your finger against there it will hurt just a little bit but overall a very comfortable um, ergonomic knife now when you close the blade blade centering is slightly to your left as you can see there but it is not rubbing against the um, liners so that's pretty good what else do we check retention now retention these knives uh, most nice with the access lock you could actually get the flip out by holding it upside down like this and just uh, I'm gonna try to do this without bumping the tripod so retention you have you know it's not gonna come out in your pocket and it's hard to do this there we go on camera with such a, a tight view here but it can be done if you just flick it with fl fling it with your whole arm but um it does come out it's nice and smooth as most access locks so hard once it gets a little oil and it rewarded it would be super smooth just like my um Ganso 704 and Benchmade Griptilian. So let's see what's the next test. Uh lock up. No up and down play. No side to side play. Just uh hitting all the marks almost perfect. Let's go ahead and do our customary paper test. And Mm. You might have a little, well, there we go. It, it's not um, cutting super, super well. It's adequately sharp, as you can see there, but it's not super duper, duper sharp. But uh, not too bad. It's a, uh, you know, it's not a, a soup, it's, it doesn't push cut, and there's a little roughness there in the cut, so it's a uh, medium. Let's see if we can shave with this. I mean, it does uh, hold on to my nail just a little bit. We can see if it shaves. And it's not quite shaving too well. Just a couple of hairs there, but uh, not too good. So for sharpness, it's adequate out of the box. But you could obviously, 440C, you could obviously sharpen that up relatively easily. You know, hold it edge relatively well. Um, speaking about edge retention, again, very well. I also failed to mention... The finish on here, it's a satin bead blasted finish. Probably the finish that I hate the most. It is not reflective, which is good, but it's more prone to rust than any other finish. Last test, bring in the piece of wood. And for those of you who've never seen any of my reviews, I uh, basically do a stab into some salt pine and rock this back and forth. Um, 
Most steels should not have a problem, you know, being in like a quarter of an inch deep into soft pine with the grain, that it shouldn't break. I've only had one night break doing this, so. But I'm just making sure that the heat treatment and the and the steel is uh, all done well, and the tip should not break in soft pine. And you can see it's done very well. So I hit all the marks with the test uh, with flying colors. Before I go over the pros and cons, I just want to go over a couple of notes here that I had written down that I want to just uh, put out there. Uh, first of all, if you like my videos, uh, please give me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps with the ratings, helps push my videos up to the top. Greatly appreciate it. Also leave comments. That, that helps me out and it also helps two-way communication. I read every comment. I might not answer every comment. Obviously, having as many subscribers that I have, it is practically impossible if anything goes on in my life. <laughs> I cannot get to all the comments and it's going to become uh, unfortunately less and less where I can get to as many comments as the viewership goes up and as comments increase and as subscribers go up which are all good things um, unfortunately I, I, I wish I could get out there and, and answer every comment but it's going to get harder and harder especially during the holiday season which you probably have seen if you do follow my channel with any regularity the um, I had a, a comment which I, I want to address and somebody was, um, lack of a better term, complaining that I'm a gear channel so why am I doing vaping gear? Um, in my book, <laughs> vaping is gear. Any, almost anything is gear. That's why I called it the gear obsession. Um, this channel is based around my obsessions with whatever seems to have caught my interest in this particular time in my life. And you can see how the focus of the channel changes as my interest changes. You know, I haven't done a gun video for a very long time. Uh, do I need to do one really soon? You bet. I came very close to pulling the trigger on a, um, on a star pistol, which would have been a CNR purchase, because I do have a CNR FFL. Pretty cool that you could, you know, easily get one of those firearm licenses and then get a gun just mailed to you to your door, which is <laughs> pretty cool and relatively inexpensive. Paperwork, not too hard. And, um, but, you know, the CNR, just, it was a Star B pistol. Really cool. Um, it looks just like a 1911. I think the only obvious difference is that it has an external extractor as opposed to the internal extractor on your normal 1911s and it was like about $250 and it used regular 9mm a lot of CNR guns uh, that's curry owned relics for those of you not in the uh, gun community um, a lot of those type of guns use weird rounds that are uh, difficult to get and this one used regular 9mm which is freaking awesome so I don't know that's on my short list of things I really really want but um you know, I, I gotta choose. I don't have an unlimited amount of funds, so I gotta pick and choose um, what I'm gonna get there. Last thing, and I'm gonna put a link, or the link is below down in the description. You're gonna see the uh, the links for the, the Ganzo, and both are plain edge and serrated edge. And then it's gonna say look down even more. And you go down, you're gonna see a link for my uh, Gear Obsession Deals website. Something I'm trying to get off the ground. It's starting out very slowly, or at least slower than I would like. So, if you uh, like to support me, <laughs> uh, so I keep on doing what I'm doing here, maybe one day make it a career. Right now, I still have a day job that pays 90%, probably 95% of the bills, actually all the bills. Um, uh, check it out, please. And what that site is about is it has... Um, really, really, I, I cherry pick really, really good deals that sort of follow along in the same gear that I have and showcase here and review here on the Gear Obsession channel. So when I come across a really, really good deal, not just any deal, but really good deal, I post it there. And then if you subscribe to the website, sort of, it's sort of a, a blog, but if you subscribe to the Gear Obsession Deals website, you will get an email every day with what I post so you can sort of keep up and you can check out those deals and they are trust me really really good deals. so if we have common interests here 
you would definitely have an interest in the Gear Obsession Deals website. Alright, so let's go with pros and cons. Pros, high value, well made, not expensive. It's uh, an awesome night. It's not available at too many places, but again, uh, Fast Tech, three weeks, $19.25. Very, very good deal, good purchase. I might even have to put this on the deal's website because I think it's that special. It does come with a little bit of cons. The, the centering, the blade centering was just a teeny bit off. And this aggression, <laughs> the aggressive scales, which are amazingly aggressive, um, will make this a little difficult to pull out of your pocket. Some people would get around that by trying to smooth out the scales that are right underneath the clip. Right there, right underneath the pocket clip. That could make your life a little bit easier trying to remove that from your pocket. By the way, this lanyard hole, I failed to point out that um, looks like 550 cord should fit through there, but it might be a, a little bit of a tight fit, but it definitely should fit through. All right, do I recommend it? Yep, definitely. Run right out and buy it right now. Links are provided down below. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and especially the guy who hates me to say, especially you. <laughs> and especially you, and I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.